So uh, by leveraging our specs for base class, we were able to create um, our specifications uh, much more quickly and uh, more easily than we were um, using the old style um, unit tests. So let's take a look at our specs for base class here and see what magic is going on there. All right, so uh, one of the really cool things that it does is it uses the mock auto, auto mocker um, from structure map to create our class under test. So what that allows us to do is uh, leverage structure map to create our class under test. And structure map is going to take care of substituting mock objects for any dependencies that our class has. So now we don't have to explicitly set up any of those dependencies. Uh, if we add a new dependency to our test, cl our class under test, um, we don't have to make any changes to our specs um, unless we need to set up some new expectations or something like that. Um, the code's still going to compile. Um, structure map's just going to um, create an additional mock and pass that in for us seamlessly. Um, at any time, we can grab one of the mocks that structure map created for us um, through mock uh, by using this helper method get mock for. Um, let's see. So the the real magic happens in this um, setup method. So we used the setup method before in our original um, unit test fixtures um, to set up the, um, the class under test and to perform the actual action. So we're still really doing the same thing here. We've just kind of abstracted things and virtualized things and leveraged structure map to uh, do some of the heavy lifting. Um, so we're creating our auto mocker. We are um, allowing our derived text, test fixtures a chance to modify the container that our um, auto mocking our auto mocking container. So we can uh, inject dependencies there if we need to for some reason. Uh, most of the time, you won't need to do this. This is just there for um, edge cases. Um, then we grab our class under test or our system under test. Uh, we grab this from our auto mocking container. Then we call the given method, and then finally we call the win method. So this is really um, this is our arrange, then this is our act, and then our asserts are still in the uh, then methods in each of the individual test fixtures. And you'll notice that everything's virtual, so there's lots of little places that we can inject additional logic if we need to. The only thing that our test fixtures must do is override this win method. So they have to implement a uh, win method to call the method that we want to test on our um, system under test or our class under test. All right, so this is really one of the key components that makes it very easy to create uh, new test fixtures or new specifications in RageFeed. Um, but we also have some nice things that we've added uh, with uh, resharper. So one of those you saw was our, let me pull it up here, our specification template. So we have this um, surprisingly simple um, resharper live template for um, creating specs. So it's just got some placeholders for um, class names, things like that. So nothing too awesome there. And then we also have some live templates for creating our test fixtures themselves, or our specifications, really. So we just type win, hit tab, and then we get this stubbed out uh, specification for us. And then when we're ready to create our actual specs, we just type then, hit tab, and it goes ahead and stubs out a new test case for us. So collectively, these things make it very easy for us to create new tests. It just takes a little bit of getting used to it. You saw even in this video here, um, still having to get used to uh, to typing uh, or to taking advantage of these shortcuts after I got kind of used to the old style of writing unit tests again. All right, uh, one other thing I wanted to show you is our in-unit um, extension or spec extensions. So I borrowed these from Specish, but there's actually a project on Codeplex now called Should. Um, I'll link to that on my blog post. Uh, but that project provides basically all these exact same extensions. But they're just extension methods uh, that wrap most of the standard in unit um, assert dot r equal is true and so on. Um, that wraps them behind a more fluent uh, extension method approach. So these help to make your tests uh, a, lot, a lot more readable and uh, make it uh, kind of a, a more fluent style of testing. So <clears throat> just to recap everything, we've gone from um, horrible, horrible um, test cases where we had um, all the functionality uh, or all the behavior of a method being verified in a single test case to this specification style of test where we have separate um, specs, sets of specs for um, different behavior, for different um, 
um, different preconditions or uh, different given conditions um, by uh, taking advantage of our um, specs for base class and some of our uh, resharper templates we've really reduced the friction for creating new tests and made it very easy uh, to, to um, use specifications to drive the development of new functionality in rage feed so um, be sure you check out my blog again that's at trycatchfail.com um, I'll have more information about um, these specs I'll probably even post you know some code and the resharper templates and things on there if you want to check them out uh, and let me know what you think I'm very interested uh, in getting feedback and anything I can do to uh, make my life as a developer easier is a, is a good thing so thanks for checking out this video and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the future